Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are still lazy. Uh, still sleepy. Okay. It's very early. Well, we just wrapped up breakfast. It's, what time is it? 7.10? We're late. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the Gospel Commentaries in the Cleochko household after breakfast. Okay, today is September 10, 2020, a Thursday morning. And today the Gospel comes from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. Okay, here we go. It's a long Gospel, so... Let me just describe it. I'll read parts of it, but let me describe the rest of it. Here is where our Lord continues with the, um, you know, remember yesterday we were saying um, how the, the, our Lord was saying, if you are experiencing some difficult challenges in your life, blessed are you, right? If people hate you, if people insult you, if people do this and that to you, blessed are you. So it's a very big challenge. To think that while you are going through a lot of difficult times in your life, you're actually being blessed. You're actually being, um, you're actually reaping plenty of graces okay, that will benefit you in the long run. Okay? Blessed are you because your reward is great in heaven. Well, today, our Lord is, is challenging His listeners and His disciples uh, in a different way, where he says, uh, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Right? Tough, right? Uh, love your enemies, right? Love your enemies is the summary of this. Someone takes your cloak, um, you know, uh, give him your tunic also. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Let him have it. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Does that sound familiar? Eh? Do unto others what you have them do unto you. What do you call that rule? The golden rule, right? <laughs> Why? The golden rule, do unto others what you would have them do unto you. Why? Because if you love those who love you, listen to this, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. Right? So our Lord is saying, you know, even sinners love people who love them in return. So if that's all you're going to do, love the people who already love you, well, then you don't, you're not doing any better than sinners. And since I'm calling you to become saints and not sinners, <clears throat> then our Lord wants us to go beyond what sinners do. To go beyond what is ordinary for people who are not striving to become saints do. Right? Our Lord is saying that if you want to become saints, you got to do better than what sinners do. Even sinners love those who love them. So, and if you do good to those who do good to you, right? So it's just reciprocating Oh, you're doing me a favor? Okay, I'll do a favor to you too. You're, you're being good to me and nice to me? I'm going to be nice to you also. What credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. See? Even sinners are nice to other people who are nice to them. So what differentiates you? You, Christians, who want to become saints, or who say you want to become saints, or who say you want to follow me when I tell you, be perfect as my heavenly Father is perfect. How different are you with those sinners? 
So there's nothing much that you're offering. <clears throat> there's nothing much different you're doing <clears throat> if all you are doing is do what sinners are doing. He says, rather love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure packed together shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. Very, very um, poetically placed, right? Poetically put by our Lord. And St. Augustine uh, paraphrases our Lord and says it in his own way, which uh, I think is equally, if not more poetic. And St. Augustine says, uh, the measure of love is to love without measure. Okay? The measure of love is to love without measure. It's a paraphrase of what our Lord is saying. The measure with which you measure, whatever it is you do for others, Whatever measurement you use, whatever gauge you use okay, to serve others and do good to others, that's exactly the same measurement that will be applied to you. Either by them, by those people you do good to, or by God, who will only bless you to a certain extent because you yourself only give to others in that extent. Okay, so there are several virtues that are uh, that our Lord is talking about in this in this gospel today, but there is one underlying virtue included in all of this that he is not naming explicitly, but is implied in all of these prescriptions that our Lord gives us here. Okay. Can anybody guess what that virtue is? What is that underlying virtue that our Lord is not saying, mentioning by name, but is implied in all of this? If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even the sinners do that. So if that's all you're doing, well. Charity. Huh? Charity. Charity? Well, uh, yes. But not quite charity, particularly. What is that virtue that requires giving more than what you might think is necessary? Because by the measure with which you measure, that's the measure will, that will be uh, uh, applied to you too. So what is the implication there? What virtue is that? Do you want others to give you just the bare minimum of what you need? Like the bare minimum that's, that sinners uh, uh, give to others. Oh, you're nice to me. I'll be nice to you. Oh, you love me. I'll love you too. That's the bare minimum. right? Even sinners do that. So what is our Lord trying to tell us here? Well, we got to do better than what the sinners do. So what is the virtue that is required so that we can do better? What's that, Jana? Huh? It starts with a G. Generosity. Very good. Generosity. We have to outdo sinners if we are to become saints. We have to outdo them. And outdo them in what? Particularly outdo them in generosity. And generosity means, generosity is the virtue of giving. Right? But it is not just giving material stuff. It is not just imparting wealth and riches and, and, and benefits to people. The beginning of generosity is really the heart. Is really love, 
So you're also correct. It is charity. There's just generosity in the overflowing of charity that we have to give others. Right? But it is the virtue of generosity that helps us give until it hurts. Generosity is a virtue that helps us to go beyond the minimum. Generosity is the virtue that makes us exceed ourselves, exceed our own capabilities. Generosity is the virtue that makes us outdo ourselves in service to others. Okay? It means doing more than even others would expect from us. Okay? To do more than what is expected of us. To go beyond expectations. That is generosity. And especially going beyond expectations when it comes to charity and service to others. Right? That's why our Lord says, well, you love those who love you. What, is, what good is that to you? You do good to those who do good to you. What does that benefit you? Even sinners do all of that. So if you want to become a saint, you want to become my disciple, you got to outdo yourselves in those things. You got to be generous. You got to give till it hurts. You got to give of yourself to others. No greater love does man have than to lay down his life for his friend. So we got to love people even to the point of death if it is necessary right offering our lives not many times it's not a question of being martyred on the cross right many times that martyrdom has to do with serving your neighbor serving the needs of others without being asked without being uh, without even showing that uh, that we are serving them but quietly and 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 with full of love we serve the others. That is the extent of the generosity that our Lord is inviting us to live by. That is the kind of martyrdom that we live every day of our lives. It's not a question of shedding blood. If it goes to that extent for the defense and love of God, why not? But in our everyday lives, Jesus is in your neighbor. Right? Jesus is your neighbor. So to die to your own self and to your own selfish preferences and your selfishness and your laziness and get, go beyond all of that in serving your neighbor, in serving others. And where do we begin doing that? Right here at home, right here with each other, right here with our family. In the little things that are required to live family life in a pleasant way right the times when you go out of your way to 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 serve your brothers and sisters the times when you go out of your way to notice that there are things that are not quite working well at home and you and you forget about your own preferences and you forget about the little thing you're doing and you go out and reach out and help Put things aright. Right? You notice that the trash is overflowing in the bathroom. Well, instead of waiting for the one in charge of doing that, you can pick it up yourself. You notice that the, the kitchen counter over there is disorderly. Instead of yelling at the, the one in charge, hey, you have not done your job here. Well, why, why, don't you, why don't you try and help and do it a little bit? Right? Or instead of waiting for mommy or papa to say, how oh, can we fix up the toys now? Well, you take the initiative to do it. If you see that the furniture is in disarray, well, you go out of your way and do it. Right? Let's give of ourselves instead of waiting to be told because if you wait to be told to do something, well, even sinners do that. <laughs> right? I could, uh, I, could have hired, I could have hired somebody out there to mow our lawn instead of uh, you doing it, instead of me waiting until you do it. So even a hireling can do that, right? So what good did it do to you? So let's not wait 
Let's be generous. Let's go out of our way to serve the others. Okay? And that begins in the family. That begins in the home. We cannot expect ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, to be doing this kind of Christian brand of charity and generosity to our neighbors out in the world if we don't do this in the family. It would be the height of hypocrisy for us to be advocating this kind of behavior of generosity and charity to other people outside of the home if inside the home we don't do it. Okay? So this applies very much to our discipleship within the family first. And if we learn how to do this in the family, then this will all spill out to the bigger environments that we are involved in. In school, at work, in government, and many other places that we operate and circulate in. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Um, remember, the measure of love is to love without measure. <laughs> and Eva is already saying bye-bye. Okay, Eva. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. See you again tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye. Eva, do you want to say bye? Eva, here. Say bye. There. Bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was Eva. Have a good day, everyone. Hopefully, you will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.